Hey, we are back for another breadcrumbs video uh, as we are walking through the pages of the prophet Jeremiah. Um, very interesting reading today. Uh, we read through chapter 12, 13, 14, and 15. And there's a couple things that I want to point out from chapter 12 and chapter 15 that really uh, I had the Lord, the Lord was focusing me in on and, and grabbed my attention today. So we're going to look at some of those pages. But, but ultimately what I want to look at today is the burden of the prophet the pain of the prophet and the cost of the of the prophetic call. Um, Jeremiah in chapter 12 and chapter 15, he voices two complaints to the Lord. And I want to look at his complaints and I want to look at the Lord's replies. Um, because this is obviously recorded for us to build us up in our faith and to connect us to our calling. And in this day and age, just as it was back in Jeremiah's day and age, um, I think there's this misnomer that people who speak for the Lord um, are popular, well-loved, and respected, and everything is going well with the men and women of God when they speak for the Lord. And really, historically, uh, throughout all of history, not just biblical times, but through all history, including our day, uh, that is just simply not the case. Um, those who speak for the Lord often are persecuted the most. They're the ones that are rejected, uh, persecuted, even many of them even martyred. You know, Jesus talks about the prophets uh, that are being killed, that he all day long he was sending them prophet after prophet after prophet. From Abel to Zechariah, Israel, you killed them. You killed my messengers. And so here we have uh, Jeremiah pouring out his heart before the Lord, and there's words of correction that God gives him that are helpful for us in our calling, uh, and words of comfort that should comfort us as well. So let's let's take a look here at these beautiful scriptures uh, as we walk through, and again, the context is God is giving Jeremiah some very difficult words for the people of Israel. God's uh, fury is about to be poured out in judgment. Um, nothing is going to be able to stop what's coming down. And Jeremiah is there pleading with the people to repent and turn back to God um, and to prepare themselves for captivity for what's coming upon Israel and Judah. But uh, here's this in beginning in verse, or uh, sorry, chapter 12. Jeremiah says, Lord, you always give me justice when I bring a case before you. Now let me bring you a complaint. Why are the wicked so prosperous? And let's just pause there because that, that question is highlighted a number of times in the Psalms, other prophets. This is a regular recurrent, recurring theme and question in the Old Testament in particular. Why do the wicked, why, why does it seem that things are going so well for them and that they're so prosperous? And here Jeremiah is asking that question. Uh, why are evil people so happy? You've planted them. They've taken root and prospered. Your name is on their lips, but their hearts, they give you no credit for it at all. But as for me, Lord, you know my heart. You see me and you test my thoughts. Drag these people away like helpless sheep to be butchered. Set them aside to be slaughtered. So here Jeremiah is asking for some vindication. He's asking for the Lord to take note of his service, um, his heart. Uh, how long must this land weep, Lord? Even the grass of the, in the fields has withered. The wild animals and birds have disappeared because of the evil in the land. Yet the people say the Lord won't do anything. It's interesting, you know, here, you know, Jeremiah is noting even creation itself is being affected by the sin of the people, which is an utterly biblical idea that the land itself is affected by blood in the land, uh, sin that is polluting the land. The people of Israel, before they even took one stepped one foot in the promised land, God said, if you, uh, if you uh, engage in idolatry and the sins of the Canaanites, the land itself will vomit you out. Um, and so here, Jeremiah is noting that the animals and the birds and creation itself has been affected and polluted. But listen to the Lord's reply. Uh, the Lord replied to me, if racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall on open ground, what will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? Even your own brothers, members of your own family have turned on you. They've plotted, raising a cry against you. Do not trust them no matter how pleasantly they speak. And so this is, in, in just as Jed's paraphrase, uh, this is the Lord in so many words saying, uh, Jeremiah, here is a straw, suck it up. Um, this is, you know, he's got a call on Jeremiah's life. Jeremiah is serving as God's spokesman. It's quite an honor um, to serve in this arena. And here he, Jeremiah is emotionally struggling with the cost of the call of being a prophet of the Lord. And you can hear even Jesus' own words here 
uh, when he talks in the New Testament about how he comes to bring a sword and divide, and even in a household, three will be turned uh, for him and two against, and two for him and three against, father against son, mother against daughter, and vice versa. Um, you know, when, when the prof- in the prophetic ministry, it causes division. It causes people to come to take a stand. And we can remember the prophet Elijah uh, confronting Jezebel and the priests of Baal and, and calling the people of Israel back to true worship of the Lord. And they had to make a choice on whose side are you on? Are you on God's side or are you on in the kingdom of darkness? Are you serving the father of light Are you serving the father of lies? Are you going to stay true to the covenant we have with the Lord? Or are you going to continue to commit adultery with these other false gods? And so the nature of the prophetic causes conflict um, and confrontation, not to ruin and destroy, but to cause people to come back and return to God and be restored. That's the hope anyway. Um, But here the Lord is, is correcting Jeremiah and he's saying, you know, Jeremiah, you, you need to come back to me. Um, you know, if you're getting tired and you're you're striving against people, um, you're you're wearing yourself out. But there's even more challenges ahead. So if these light challenges are are wearing you out, what are you going to do when you're facing the real adversity that's about to come? That's a very sobering thought, um, and the Lord confirms that He's with Jeremiah. Um, he's not going to leave him. He's going to deliver him from his enemies. But let's take a look at another one of, for the sake of time. Um, Jeremiah's complaint here in chapter 15, because today's readings are kind of bookended with these complaints. So uh, chapter 15, verse 10, Jeremiah registers a second complaint. He says, uh, I said, what sadness is mine, my mother? Oh, that I had died at birth. I am hated everywhere I go. I am neither a lender who has threatened to foreclose nor a borrower who refuses to pay, yet they all curse me. And so he's, he's really bemoaning his estate here, uh, and he feels like everyone has rejected him and everyone hates him. Um, you know, and Jesus says in the New Testament, um, what they do to the green tree, they'll do to the dry tree. What they do to the teacher, you can expect them to do to the pupil. Um, and if this, is what, if this is how they received Jesus and rejected him, uh, he was sent amongst his own and was rejected. What should we expect as his people? There's a measure of rejection in the, in the call to being a disciple, to following Christ and representing the kingdom as an ambassador of reconciliation and, and a minister of the gospel. And so we shouldn't expect that it's always going to go well and it'll always be easy. In fact, I'm sure many of you that are listening to this have gone through betrayals, rejection, and pain. And, and the Lord wants to comfort us in that place because ultimately the truth is, if they reject the one that God sends, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the Lord, actually. That's what the Lord comforts Ezekiel with in his call as a watchman. He says, I'm going to send you to people who you know their language. And when you speak to them, they're going to reject you. But they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. But see, God loves people. And even though he knows they're going to reject his word, he still gives them the covenantal witness and sign of faithfulness by having a prophet come and speak his words and call people to repentance. Um, it's, it's an important principle in the Bible that God does nothing without first telling his prophets and warning people about what is coming. Time and time again, God is standing with his hands outstretched, pleading that people would choose life. But here we have, you know, the pain that the prophet feels in their heart is, uh, you know, this pain of rejection, the pain of everywhere I go, I feel I'm despised. It's not an easy call, and Jeremiah is wrestling with it. But listen to the Lord, and he says, uh, All will be well with you, Jeremiah. Your enemies will ask you to plead on their behalf in times of trouble and distress. Can a man break a bar of iron from the north or a bar of bronze? Because of all my people's sins against me, I will hand over their wealth and treasures as plunder to the enemy. I will tell their enemies to take them as captives to a foreign land, for my anger blazes forth like a fire, and it will consume them. Then I said, this is obviously Jeremiah speaking again, Lord, you know I am suffering for your sake. Punish my persecutors. Again, pleading for vindication. Don't let them kill me. Be merciful to me and give them what they deserve. Your words are what sustains me. They bring me great joy and are my heart's delight, for I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. I love that verse for the prophet um, the word of God is everything. And Jeremiah in another passage says, your word is like a fire shut up in my bones and my heart. I, I, try, I can't help but speak out what you've revealed to me from your word. 
um, and, and the, the prophet's sustenance and provision comes from the word of God. We, we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He says, I never joined in the people in their merry feasts. I sat alone because your hand was on me. I burst with indignation at their sins. Why then does my suffering continue? Why is my wound so incurable? Your help seems as, as uncertain as, an, as a seasonal brook. It is like a spring that has gone dry. This is, I love the Bible. I love how honest it is and how these pleas and these cries from David or Jeremiah or Moses, these great men and women of God are recorded for us. They're being real. They're being raw. They're just laying their heart out there. And he's saying, man, Lord, it feels like you're inconsistent. Where are you when I'm being persecuted? And Jesus himself, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We might feel that way, but we got to remember, just because you feel something does not mean it is true. And now here, listen to the Lord's reply. Uh, if you return to me, Jeremiah, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak words that are worthy, you will be my spokesman. You are to influence them. Do not let them influence you. And this is a, a great word of, of admonition and comfort that we need to remember. We are to influence the world, not have the world influence. We are to be conformed to the image of Christ, not conformed to the image of the world. And so we have the light, we have the wisdom of God, we have the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead resides in us. And so the Lord is, is actually comforting Jeremiah and calling him up into who he actually is because the word of God is residing in his heart. He says, they're going to fight against you like an attacking army, but I will make you as secure as a fortified wall. They will not conquer you, for I will protect and deliver you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Yes, I will certainly keep you safe from these wicked men. I will rescue you from their cruel hands. What a comforting thought. God is with Jeremiah. Jeremiah is pouring out his heart. The Lord doesn't uh, crumple him up like a piece of paper and throw him in the wastebasket. He doesn't despise uh, the complaints. He just meets Jeremiah where he's at, corrects some of Jeremiah's thinking, and sets Jeremiah on the foundation um, of God's goodness, on God's deliverance, on his word, and brings that, that beauty and that peace and that comfort to his servant. If you will speak words that are worthy, you will continue to serve me as my spokesman. What a great calling that, that Jeremiah has uh, as, a pro as a prophetic witness and a minister. It wasn't an easy calling, but what an amazing privilege and honor to serve the Lord in that, in that role and to represent the kingdom of God on the earth. So I hope this, uh, this comforts you all today. It comforted me as I read through these words today that there's nothing new under the sun. It wasn't easy then. Uh, it's not easy now, but the, the Lord is with us. He will sustain us with his word and he will protect us because Jesus said, no one will snatch my sheep out of my hand. So praise the Lord. Be blessed today as you go about uh, your time with your family and work and wherever the Lord has you. God bless.